But many people were asking Jean Charest to throw his hat into the ring. Charest, of course, well-known former Premier of Quebec, Deputy Prime Minister under Kim Campbell. I'm pleased to say that Jean Charest joins us in studio talking about his next step into federal politics, running for the Conservative leadership. Good morning, Mr. Charest. Good, Good morning, you. Leslie. You know, a lot of people are saying, why do you want to come back into politics? Yes. Why now? Well, and my wife asked my... <laughs> <laughs> and uh, because I care a lot about the country. This is, you know, the country is badly divided right now, Leslie. We're balkanized. You see it in the outcome of the election campaign. And, uh, and I, I know the Conservative Party has a special responsibility in that respect. I mean, if the, any party in the country right now can bridge east-west, we're it. And, uh, and we need to get the parties uh, organized, we need to get it united and focus on the issues that we care about, including the economy. Uh, we're, we're the day after the budget. I think a lot of people who are in the business community have to be very disappointed that there isn't a stronger push to clean up the balance sheet as we come out of COVID, focus on economic growth, on the things we need to do to be able to grow the economy and get people uh, you know, to increase their revenue, that kind of thing. And, uh, and I have the experience, having been on both sides, to be a prime minister who understands how this federal system works and make it work. So it's about the party. It's about also winning a national government. And I'm the person who can do that for the party. Let's talk about party unity. Yeah. It's a very different party than when you were there when it was the Progressive Conservative Party. Yes. How are you going to convince? I, is it safe to say you are still a Progressive Conservative? Progressive when I'm, it comes to social issues, Conservative fiscally. Well, I, I'm a Conservative, period. And, you know, it is uh, something of discussion during this leadership race because I'm not a hyphenated Conservative. And a political party, Leslie, is a living institution. It evolves with time. Every leader leaves their mark, and the new leader will take the party as is, which is exactly my situation. Now, what are the values that I believe in as a conservative? That includes fiscal conservatism, market-based economy, economic policies that promote growth and increase the revenue of people, supporting families, the rule of law, very important issue in this leadership race because I have a competitor, uh, to name him, Mr. Podiev, who supported, as you know, the blockade. And if you want to be a leader in this country, and a legislator, you can't make laws and break laws. You have to do, you, and you have to respect laws if you want other people like you to obey the laws that you're voting. And so this is a real issue. And finally, conservatives have a, a view of federalism that is particular to them, that respects the jurisdiction of the provinces. So, so those are the values that I am running on that I've always respected in my, my political life. Interesting, you mentioned Mr. Polyev. You know you're in Polyev territory. He, yes. He, his writing's just down the road. We've interviewed him many times in the studio, being the local MP. Is yeah. he your main opponent? Is that why you called him out? Well, I guess there's, there's going to be a lot of good people in this race, but he's certainly one of the main opponents. There's no doubt about that. So what makes you different from him? Well, Aside from the just, just the respect, well, that's, and it's a, pretty, it's a fundamental issue. I mean, you can't, I think, uh, say I want to be the chief legislator of the country, but the laws of their land, for me, I'm above the laws, and I, it's going to be a buffet from which I will choose. The other thing uh, about this race is that there's a choice here, Leslie, for the Conservative Party. Either we are going to go down the route of American-style politics, of wedge politics and attacks and uh, that we, we are actually seeing in this leadership race, or we, go, we are going to be Canadian and we're going to be a Canadian Conservative Party, which is what I believe in. So that is also a, a very real issue for the Conservative Party. If I read between the lines, is this a pledge to take the high road as we get closer well, and closer to the... It is. I mean, I'm running because I believe in Canada. It's been the story of my life. I'm, I'm, I'm from the eastern townships, as you are. I mean, uh, I, everything about my life has been about Canada and fighting for this country, pushing back on the separatist movement and the referendums. And it's a common theme. And that's what uh, brought me to this race because of my deep belief and my love for the country. You know, being born or being a citizen of this country, Leslie, is like winning the lottery, really. I mean, with everything that's happening in the world now. So I want to see this country united. And we can only be effective as a country when we have a national government. We don't have it now with the Trudeau Liberals, certainly not. We don't have the economic agenda we need, certainly not. Not after yesterday's budget where we're getting more spending over more spending when in fact we have high inflation. We need a growth agenda and that's what I'm going to deliver for the country as I did in the past when I was in Quebec. I want to go back to the unity question in the party specifically and the social conservative wing. They've had a lot of power as yeah. Mr. O'Toole will tell you of late. Uh, how do you satisfy that wing where they are socially conservative? 
And they may say, I don't agree with you socially and with, with your stand on yeah. gay marriage and a woman's right to choose. Well, the thing that we understand is that we have these core values that we all agree on and that we respect, Leslie, and that's, uh, I think, the core of the party. And then there may be issues on which we have different views, because a political party as a living institution is not a sect. But those who have different views should be respected also. And, uh, and who are the, those who hold those views, if not people who have a faith-based uh, religious life? They believe in their family, their community. They're all very good people. So I, I've led a caucus before. Those who hold those views should be respected. And, uh, but we also need to focus on a single agenda for the party as we move forward, which I will do after becoming leader, and that will be the election campaign. And then the real test of this leadership race is who can make us win? Who's going to keep us in opposition and even reduce the footprint of the party? Or who will allow us to be conservatives and win a national government? And I, I'm the leader who will do that. Some say the party has gone too far to the right. And that is why that doesn't reflect the majority of views of Canadians. Therefore, they weren't able yeah. to win last time around. Will you bring it closer to the center, or where were you, how well, are you going to define your politics? I will anchor the Paul the Paul party very solidly on the values that I've just talked about, okay. about which I did when I, I was in Quebec, by the way. You know, when the Legault government came in, they had an eight billion dollar surplus, a higher credit rating in Quebec today than Ontario. I mean, that was 15 years of discipline. Those are the things that I believe in. So it's going to be very much anchored around those values, and it'll be focused on a national agenda, which will include the West, which will include the East, and Quebec, by the way. I mean, there's 32 Bloc MPs in the House of Commons now. Mm. And, uh, and, and just watch them react when I become leader, because they're going to they're be fighting for their future for a good reason. I will elect a whole strong delegation of uh, conservative MPs in Quebec to form this national government. And that will allow us to return to a country that works efficiently and a federal system that is able to get big things done, which hasn't been the case in the last year. Safe to say that you fight to protect francophone rights across the country? Yes. Yeah, uh, very much so. And, and on Bill 21, for example, I, I, uh, I've been opposed to it. I've been on the record of saying I'm this, opposed to it. This is the, uh, the... The law on religious symbols. Right. So the teacher and, in Gatineau, for example, who was dismissed from the classroom for it. Will you take on Legault? Trudeau says he's going to wait. Would you be prepared if you win and you become prime minister to take uh, my, on... My position has been this. This is very popular legislation in Quebec. I understand that. This legislation goes to the Supreme Court of Canada, Leslie. Yeah. I will, as prime minister, stand up and I will put forward the position of the federal government. Interestingly enough, Mr. Poitier says he won't. I mean, I was, I was shocked when I heard him say that. Uh, he talks of freedom, but he, he'll, you know, if this goes to the Supreme Court, he says he won't defend the rights of Canadians. But by saying that, you could lose votes in Quebec. That's perhaps well, and, why he is. And I accept the fact that, you know, and, and the media in Quebec have picked up on that. Yeah. The media in Quebec has picked up on the fact that I am pro-oil and gas, I'm pro-pipelines, and I was when I was in office and out of office, by the way. I mean, this isn't new to the leadership race. And on Bill 21, I was presented with recommendations when I was Premier to outlaw religious symbols, and I refused to do it because I didn't believe it was right. So I've been tested on this issue. I've, I have a record of standing up for the things that I believe in, even if they're not popular in Quebec, Leslie. But that's, you know, that's leadership. That's what leadership should be about. You, we, we need leaders who have been tested and who have proven that they're able to stand up for Canadians when it counts. Will you stand up for the English minority in Quebec? But thinking specifically Bill 96, which is a little history here, the uh, yeah. rewriting of Bill 101, the strengthening, if you like, of the CAQ government to basically make it infringe even further on the Engl English rights. Would you take on Legault on that issue? Well, I've always been a very strong defender of, of minority language rights everywhere. And on this issue, this is provincial jurisdiction. What I, I regret is that there hasn't been enough of an involvement of the Anglophone community in designing this legislation. When I was Premier, they were at the table and very involved. This is an issue for all Quebecers. We all agree that we need to protect the French language and culture. There's no question about that. But when we design language legislation and it involves minorities, Leslie, the cardinal rule for me has always been that everyone has to be at the table. You don't do it against a group. Or, and so uh, on this legislation, I think there's, you know, we need to be very sensitive to their needs and what their requirements are and be fair to them. Because they are, the Anglophone minority in Quebec, as you know, and I know, are as committed to the future of the French language and culture as everyone else. So why don't we celebrate that, recognize that, and support, and support them? So why doesn't Legault feel the same well, way? Well, the approach he's taken has been, in my view, has not been inclusive enough. 
But we'll see where the legislature. It's still in the uh, National Assembly. Mm -hmm. We'll see where it's going. And uh, and uh, and that that's a provincial jurisdiction issue. So we'll see where they'll go on. Where do you worry about another referendum in Quebec, given the way where the CAQ is going? And so I never take for granted national unity. And if you're the leader of the party, you should never, ever, ever take for granted. Whether it's Quebec or actually out west, mm. out, you know the the sentiment out west is very dis, is very uh, I'm very concerned about because people there are very disappointed. We should, uh, and a prime minister and a leader of a party, especially a conservative party of Canada, because of our historical role, should always be at the forefront of uniting the country. But the prime minister has to speak to that. And if the leader doesn't, uh, the country doesn't speak to that, it doesn't happen. Look where we are now. We are very, very balkanized. We, I, we are more divided now as a country than we've been since the 1980s. And it explains why I'm running, because it, it doesn't have to be that way. There is no fatality in politics. There's no fatality in life if you, as a leader, decide it's going to be uh, different. And that's where I, I stand in this leadership race, and that's where I think the Conservative Party of Canada has a responsibility and a role. The West is key to you, your, you winning Very. this. Uh, you can deliver the votes in Quebec, but can you deliver the votes in Alberta where, let's just say, the love is lost between the two, and your history in Quebec may may come back to bite you. Well, and I went to Calgary very early in the campaign because I wanted to deliver that message that I want to be a Prime Minister for Western Canada as I will be for Quebec and I, I have a record of doing that. I care about that uh, every part of the country. I just come from Newfoundland, Labrador and, and Halifax. You know, it's uh, back to what we were saying earlier. I mean, to know this country is to to really appreciate how lucky we are to live here. And the West is much better being at the table of a national government shaping policy as opposed to being outside, especially on energy and on climate. Climate is a key issue for the country. That's an area where we have to get it right. And by the way, slogans are not going to do it. I mean, if, if anyone thinks we're going to walk into the next federal election campaign as conservatives with a slogan on climate, I mean, they're going to be greatly disappointed because they're not going to have long conversations on the threshold of the doors of Canadians. Same is true on immigration. We have to get that right. And, uh, and we suffered from the, a very bad perception on our attitude towards immigration. That also has to change. Is uh, green policy as important to you as oil and gas? It is, and it can be done. I've been there. I was in Rio in 92 with a conservative government. We did the climate change convention. I did the carbon trading system with California, and it's working. It's supported in Quebec. And what we need is strong support for carbon capture and storage, hydrogen, green, blue, biofuels, uh, small modular reactors. If we do that, get that right, we can do a price on carbon as long as it doesn't discriminate against rural Canadians or it's a, as long as it's not a wealth transfer tax. And if we, we get that right, then do the transition and we'll do the transition with oil and gas. I mean, that's what Europe is doing. We need to be smart about this and we can be. You know, Canada and Conservatives did the Montreal Protocol, most successful environmental treaty in the world. We did the Clean Air Act with the United States on SO2 emissions. Now there's a record, and I was there, of real accomplishments that also addresses the economy and environment in a smart way. We're the ones who can do it on climate. Let's talk about the other candidate running who hasn't been named yet that uh, everyone's talking and connecting you to, Patrick Brown. Yes. Uh, as you know, the article's yep. out there. You were his political idol. You guys <laughs> are old friends. Have you, uh, do you uh, want to comment on the report that the two of you are working together to get you elected? There's no, there was a, a, a speculation of a deal. There's no deal. The members will vote and they'll decide. I know Patrick. I've known him a long time. He came into politics with me uh, when I was the leader of the, the federal party. And I have a lot of respect for him. And, uh, and in this race, uh, I think that's important that there be uh, among the candidates that level of respect. I've talked with Leslin Lewis. I've talked with uh, Leona Alisleb, who came into the race only a few days ago with uh, Mr. Uh, Barber. And so I, I want to, and, and Scott Akinson. I mean, uh, it's important that we talk to each other and there be that level of respect and not you know, go into the American style of attack dog politics because that will only hurt the the party, but more than that, Canadians don't want that. You know, Canadians watch this race. It's interesting to observe everywhere I go, the same, they make the same remarks to Conservatives. The choice we will be making as leader will be consequential for the future of the country. And it's uh, and intuitively, Canadians look at this race and they, they, they're saying to themselves, we have a choice. We can go down the American route politics or be American style, which is some think we should do, or we're going to be Canadians. And, and that's where I, I stand. And we can be very proud conservatives 
who will look to the future of the country, unite the country, and, and present a very strong economic agenda. That's, that's where I want to go. Final question. If you don't win the leadership, will you still seek a seat? Well, we'll get there uh, when I win the leadership. I have every confidence I will. And we'll take this a step at a time, but I'm very confident I'll win the leadership and I will be the leader and I'll be the next uh, Prime Minister of Canada, Leslie. Good to see you, Mr. Sherry. Thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Good luck in the race. Thank you, Leslie.